What if you had to discover that the more ethical you are, the better your life is going to become, the more successful and more happy you're going to become, and vice versa, the less ethical you are, the more your life is going to turn to hell? Well, this has been discovered scientifically, and this discovery is going to change the world. And then you discovered that there was nothing you could do about it, that it's so deeply embedded in your DNA that no matter what you believe, this still happens to you. Wouldn't that change the way that you think? And more importantly, wouldn't it change the way that you act? And if everybody found this out, wouldn't it make a better world to live in? If everybody knew that that's what they're doing to themselves when they're being unethical to others, wouldn't it make a better world? So how did they discover this? Well, I'm going to get to the science in a little bit. But firstly, I want to explain how lucky we are right now that we've got to observe evolutionary DNA. All right. So we can observe chimps and bonobos that are 98.7% genetically similar to us. So chimps are the sort of male dominated, more aggressive cousins of ours, uh, distant cousins. And exactly genetically similar are the more loving, more caring, more female dominated bonobos, right? They both have, so they're both equal cousins of ours. We've got to observe those. And we've got to observe that with DNA evidence that every human is 99.9% .9 similar to every other human. So we all have, we way more similar than what we believe we are. We are that similar, even if you from Samoa or if you part of the royal family somewhere in Europe, you're 99.9% .9 similar. So the importance of this is that we have evolved and the brain doubled in size roughly 500,000 years ago. The human brain doubled in size and we became Homo sapiens about 300,000 years ago. But the human brain doubled in size and so remember that number, 500,000 years. And we were hunter-gatherers until only about 12,000 years ago. So that is 488,000 years, all right, that we were hunter-gatherers. So our DNA is exactly or mostly sort of 98% because that's 12 over 500. We are 98% evolved as hunter-gatherers. Now remember that with evolution, there's survival of the fittest. And the reason that humans survived or became the dominant species was they figured out how to survive as a clan, as a, you know, the a clan of um, uh, humans is way more strong, strong, especially if you can get a big enough clan that, that all believe in the same thing that that is way more powerful than any other animal, all right? Even if other animals were twice our size with twice the amount of brain power, you can get 20 humans and they're going to be twice as powerful. But there's one very important drawback which has been observed by anthropologists, and not really a drawback, is that everybody in the clan has to be equal and everybody has to work together, all right? And if you don't work together, then the clan doesn't survive. So it was very important for this evolutionary mechanism to develop so that if there was one person that was being unethical and stealing and lying and kind of doing things badly towards the clan, that that person got rooted out quite early, that they started making mistakes and they got, and everybody started observing them and they got thrown out quite quickly. So this is a very important mechanism. This phenomenon was discovered by researchers in a university in 2010. And I wish I could tell you the name of the university and who these researchers are. But unfortunately, two years afterwards, in about 2012, 2013, right, there was this witch hunt of psychological research and psychology as a whole, as a science, was nearly dropped as a science. So their very livelihoods were at stake. So they had to kind of put things on pause. But 10 years later, researchers in another university in another country did the exact same research, obviously with more people and more stricter guidelines, and found the exact same thing. So what did they find? They found that wherever you lie on the spectrum of psychopathy, all right, so from an angel over there to a psychopath over there, wherever you lie on the spectrum of ethics, all right, um, 
the further you are down, there's a part of your brain about the size of a tennis ball that is known to be very important in decision making. Very important. In fact, if you have a stroke in that part of the brain, your decisions are all over the place. Not only that, but you don't learn from bad decisions in the past. So it's a very important part of the brain. I wish I could tell you the name of that as well. But you can go and research this and you'll probably find it. It took me about two days after discovering the, all these names in an anthropological book. Because I've been doing the research because I'd already written my own book on my own findings that were the same as this. Because of these 21 years that I could live in relative seclusion, I could actually observe different theologies and different ways of being. And these were my own findings as well. Is whenever I sort of slipped down that uh, spectrum of ethics, life started turning to hell and I started making really bad decisions. So the research has found that there's a part of the brain that fires less and less and less, especially when you are making important decisions, it fires less the further you are. So no matter who you are, the further you are down the ethical spectrum, this part of the brain starts, it fires less and less when you're making a decision. Now, why is this important for your survival and for your happiness and for your success? Is because where you are now is a result of the choices you have made in the last five or 10 years, or even the last year. And where you're gonna be in a year, five years, 10 years, 15 years from now, is gonna be as a result of the choices you make, good or bad. So you can increase in happiness and success, or you can decrease and go to a life of hell. And this mechanism can't be turned off. It's, like I said, evolutionary programmed. So. This part of the brain alerts your prefrontal cortex, which that and your, your hippocampus, but most of your, you are, your decision making, you are kind of, that's, you are in your pre prefrontal cortex. When I say you, of course you, there's more to you than that. But the part that you register with is your prefrontal cortex. That's making the decisions. But if this part is turned off, we're making important decisions. And that is so important because the decisions that you make is where you're going to end up. And if you make, if you consistently make really bad decisions, consistently make really bad decisions, right? Um, you start, you stop trusting your decisions and then you get anxiety because you go like, well, I've made so many bad decisions in the past. You know, now I'm trying to decide whether, you know, a new relationship or a new job, or I'm trying to decide this, but, or a new theology or a new, and, but I've made so many bad decisions. So there's anxiety about decisions, not only that, but the chances are that you're going to make a bad decision. And it's also happening at a subconscious level as well. So in your dealings with, with other humans and like split second decisions as well, during the day, you're making the wrong decision. So it's affecting you on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's also affecting you over time. And that can lead your life to either a, a much better life or you can live in hell. You know, it can actually, through your decision-making apparatus, and this is what's been discovered in two separate individual research studies in really important, really, really good universities around the world. This gets especially interesting when you think about religion. Now, a lot of people are skeptical about religion. They believe it, it is a controlling mechanism, that Christianity came along towards the end of the Roman Empire, the fall of Rome, and the beginning of the Dark Ages to control people. So to control or that it's a, a crutch when people are doing really badly, they reach out to God as a last resort. But there's another school of thought that says that this religion is more of an observation of people's lives down that ethical spectrum of their lives turning to hell, especially after the agricultural revolution, when people moved out of tight-knit clans, where it was pretty obvious pretty soon when someone was living unethically and that person could get kicked out and their DNA wouldn't make it but but you needed that mechanism in the brain in order to realize that person but then uh, now with the agricultural revolution people were living on farms mostly and going to towns to trade where you could get away with doing more unethical stuff and yet still people's lives turned to hell and they 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 started telling these stories they started noticing it over thousands of years and started telling these stories around campfires and it slowly made it into spiritual texts all around the world 
And that's why there are so many similarities, similarities in all the spiritual texts around the world. Like if you look at the Hindu belief in karma, you know, the big world turns and um, if you do bad unto others, then bad things will happen to you. It's very similar to the Christian belief in do unto others as you would have do unto you. So it's very often believed, or there's a big belief system now, that uh, the spiritual text came from observation of lives that got better or turned to hell, and then that, that went into stories, and these stories were compiled all over the world, and those became religions. Why is this discovery going to change the world? Well, if you know to th this to be true, if you know that this is a mechanism that there's no ways of getting away from, that the less ethical you are, before you make your next decision about what you're going to do, is you're going to make a decision on whether to act ethically or not. Because that's going to affect the quality of your decisions, which is going to affect the quality of your life. So it's kind of self-serving, but not in a bad way, because if everyone is more ethical, then it's going to make for a much better planet to live on. And so I really believe that this discovery is going to change the world because people more and more people are going to find out about this about this mechanism that makes so much sense evolutionary speaking and has now been scientifically proven on two separate really big, big research studies and the more people that find out about this the, the better of a planet that we're going to live in